So it's a super rare opportunity to use one of these things. So uh, we thought it would be a good idea to share our experience of using this camera and why it's so different to just going out with your DSLR or your C100 or something. I think working with a piece of kit like this really does change the way you make films. One thing you'll notice is the camera is big. So that means that everything else has to be big as well. All the support, sporting gear, all the grip gear, everything has to be able to hold this thing up. And we've got to have enough manpower to move it around in a safe way as well. That's mm. kind of a big deal. And we do have to make a point about how big it is because it really does affect like everything. It affects the way you plan it, the way you shoot it, and the aesthetic of it. So I think something that you find is when you have a much lighter setup, you can sort of mm. change when you want. You can yeah. be purely observational, you can move around the scene. There's no messing around. That's There's a pressure there that I've never really experienced before where you have to make a decision um, fairly quickly and efficiently. Yeah. And also it's got to be the right one because as soon as um, you commit to setting the track, that's you know an hour and a lot of people's hard work going into it. If, if, if the angle's not quite right with like um, your black magic, you can just shimmy it <laughs> around, but to just, if, it, if it's, if it's- Try shimmy in there. If, if, it, if it's a few inches off, it's, you, you've got you've to gotta do a lot of work to correct it. And first AD, uh, me uh, and Will would like discuss in what order we were gonna shoot stuff. The dolly uh, requires a lot of setup time. This is the shot where um, Connor's running through the field. We walked through the setup with the grips beforehand, so they knew exactly where to put the track. Um, and then as soon as they got working on balancing and setting up, we all went up the field and we did um, some POV work. Yeah, for the binocular shot at the start. And you start getting into this rhythm of um, planning um, setups, um, and it almost doesn't feel right to shoot something without people working on another. Um, set up at the same time. Yeah, you start thinking more efficiently and working more efficiently. The thing I like the most about it is how it encourages everybody to have like a certain etiquette and a certain mindset towards mm. the efficiency of the way you do things. Um, with, when you're shooting digital, there's this sort of thing where you keep going. Every time we're trying to approach a project, we're always like, um, everybody's going to have their own role and we're all going to be super professional and it always just turns into a mess or this like run and gun mess but with with this kit you don't really have that choice the scanning process has always been a mystery to me so me too yeah. um it's been a real eye opener um seeing the process that's involved in transferring the physical film into adobe premiere CineLab uh, invited us to their labs in London um, so we could have a look at their facility and see uh, the process, how they do it. So it comes in, goes into the dark room, so 400 foot load or 1,000 foot load, and then they'll make that up into 2,000 foot reel on a winder, and then that goes into a magazine, and it goes onto the processor. It goes through the various, um, the actual development chemicals, and then you're going to the fix, which fixes it, and there's bleach, and there's like, you know, various other washes and all these different chemical tanks. And it just goes from in one to the next, to the next, to the next, so a series of pulleys, and um, it comes out the other end on a take up, and that 2,000 foot roll comes off, and then it will come to me for Teddy Cine. You will produce HD dailies with as close as we possibly can for an unattended grade to the final look of the film. Those files go to editorial, down the line editorial do their edit and they'll make an EDL um, edit decision list. That will come back to us with all the sections that they, they require for the ARRI scanner, the required takes, and then um, the film's loaded back onto the ARRI. The ARRI will go through the EDL, say okay I want that bit, that bit, that bit, that bit, and then scan it in, in 2K, 4K, 6K, whatever you want. For our film, we just had, uh, I think, a technical best light, a full HD Good. 1080p once over ProRes file uh, with all of the info. It's like a, um, a non clipping technical grade applied to it. And technical best light is a really cost effective way of getting graded dailies. We won't push the black levels or the white levels, there'll be no crushing or clipping. So although every shot is graded shot by shot by shot, 
we're always just under clip and just above crush. So that, that means that you can shoot on film. The material will go through the telecine once, you never need to go back to it, and that provides you with your, you can take um, ProRes 444s or the DPX files if you require as your master, because they're not clipped, so you've got all the ranges there. So if you want to grade further, tweak it, or whatever you want with it, it's there. It's not log, so it's not all flat and set up. That ProRes file was then sent to us and we cut the film and graded it with the, with the with Premiere uh, and DaVinci. What was interesting also was the way that they used to um, grade uh, films uh, back in the day. Yeah, the massive mechanical <laughs> DaVinci, yeah. <laughs> you had the Kodak analyzer, which was little hand-driven hand Flintstone style, and a uh, yeah, tiny little screen, with like a, a red, green, blue filter spinning around. <laughs> And behind it, creating a, a tiny little image. All you had was 50 points, printer points, um, of red, green, blue. It's just varying filters, intensity of filters. You just got clean, pure light, and it will just put either more or less yellow or, or blue light through. You know the look you want, and you literally just add red, green, blue. That was it, and density. The results were brilliant because the, the the negatives and the and the print stocks were so perfectly balanced. With this, you've got to get your black black. They've got to keep that pure white. There's a halation around that cloud, and but with print, you wouldn't get that. It would just lock it off, and it'd just go pure white. So your blacks and your whites will take care of. It's just an overall hue. It's not just a load of data sitting on a hard drive somewhere. It's yeah. nice to know that it, it exists, like a book, and somewhere something. safe as well. Um, yeah. And it's you know it's not necessary. It's not a finished article, is it? You know, as the, as the scanning processes, I guess, get better, then mm -hmm. the final result will just keep getting better. You know, films always been two K, four K, six K. It's just we've never had the technology to to get all that information off the film. It's only there's a tele series and the scanners have come on that. That, um, that the technologies come around to, to release all that, that information, still have these beautiful pictures. You know, we're, all, we're remastering films all the time that people have only seen on old VHS and you know, standard definition, smeary, old, horrible pictures. But you remaster it and it's shot on film, it's like, whoa, look at that. The use of this camera means that every move is very, very premeditated and thought out. Not only do we go to the location first, do a walk around, pre-vis, um, I then sit down and I do a series of drawings on how I envision the action playing out, which I then take to Adam. Yeah, that's all right, that's impossible, do it a different way, or we'll try it, we'll have a look, we'll have to go yeah, back to the location. change things on the season. day. Yeah, of course. Do different things. But for sort of large moves, you have to sort of have a, a clear understanding of how everybody's going to move in that scene. So for me, storyboarding is very mm -hmm. important. It helps, and it makes for me, it makes things faster just, with Adam. Yeah, as well. it's just, it's just. There's none of this. Oh, what are we going to do next? It's, it's uh, easy that. to just go back to the storyboard and say we just need to do this one. Anything you take to an actor, be it like um, anything, bit of previous videoing, uh, photos, drawings, it just it paints like a picture in their head which gets them more excited. If everybody's idea of what's going on is growing, then it makes life a lot easier. Nobody's on the wrong page. It's better. And the storyboards, for me, help everybody get on the same page faster, which makes everything faster, which makes everything happier. We get to go home earlier. There is a weight to the picture. I don't, I don't even know what I mean by that, but there is, there is. like a weight to it. And an imperfection it. as well. And you can see it kind of wobbling around a little bit, but it's this weighty wobble. It's not like the wobble of your hand um, grabbing mm. onto the camera. Like a technical you know. wall. Yeah, so. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it almost feels like really close to almost being like a live thing. Like when you go, you're you're really going and it's rolling in there and the film is money and it's churning away and you ha everybody feels like you have to get it now, like it has to be right because there's a limited amount you can get in that mag. And once it's out, it's out. And if it runs out, then we've got to buy more or yeah. book more shooting days, which mm. aren't good. So there's this thing where you have to, you have to nail it. Mm. You just feel 
slightly more inclined to be on it and because you, you know that you're not going to get a second chance yeah for sure yeah <clears throat> Phil, for me just does everything better it's just got a, that all, I'm not going to say organic I'm not going to feel organic nature and all that but it's uh, it it is, it's just got that, that natural feel of it. It's a beautiful thing. Film's not more expensive to shoot than digital. It's a, that's a complete myth. It, it's, it, it's been proven time and time again, it, it's not. And, you know, looking at pure material side of things, you know, we know that films can, you know, can sit on the shelf for over a hundred years and still be absolutely, pick it up and put it back on the scanner. Even films shot on digital, we master those back to film for archiving reasons because insurance companies want a physical product they don't want it sitting just on the, on the drive somewhere. It's film versus digital, films versus digital. And then the penny drops, it's like, no, they could coexist. They could absolutely coexist. If you like the look of film, shoot on film.